And we're live. All right, guys, what is up? Episode number seven of the Unplugged Alpha series. And uh, tonight is going to be a fun one. I've uh, got a bunch of the guys from my private community in the waiting area, which I'm going to pull in just one second. Uh, might have some additions. Hopefully, Moff can join us. Um, looking forward to this talk. So I wanted to drop this because last week um, there was a lot of dialogue in a private community and some back and forth, even privately. You know, some guys will message me and, and just say, hey, you know, a lot of the stuff that you talk about really works. I, I, I wasn't sure at first, but, you know, uh, <laughs> applying it really does work. So I figured it would be good to bring them in or invite them to come in. And I had a lot of takers up on it. Um, there's not a lot of room to put everybody in uh, to these sorts of events, but it looks like we might be almost full tonight. And uh, we'll be able to take some uh, some questions, some super chats, if you guys want to throw something uh, at me or any of the guys here. And uh, we'll do some call-ins as well later. So adding to the stream, we've got uh, Derek, we've got The Irishman, we've got Jason Bible, we've got Chad Osborne, we've got Steve from Accounting, and Robert. Welcome, my brothers. What's up? Hey, Rich. Right. Hey, Rich. Hey, Rich. Good to be welcome, on. welcome. So um, some of you chose to stay anon uh, because of what you do, you know, with your day to day job. And it's, you know, it's not a uh, it's not an issue. I, I completely vouch for all of these guys. So um, let's go around the table and just let everybody know um, who you are. So state um, so you don't give away your identity, uh, state uh, age, height, weight, because that's important. Obviously, you know, the looks factor um, and uh if you want a ballpark uh, income from last year, so I mean, here in Canada, we call it like a, a notice of assessment form. You guys got some sort of form in the States, I'm, I'm sure, which summarizes your annual income. But just let guys know where you're at on, on the sexual market value scale. So age, height, weight, and annual income from the prior year. Uh, Derek, you want to go first? Sure. I'm uh, 28 years old, six foot four, about 210. And last year, I pulled in about 124,000 US dollars. The Irishman. I am 5'9", uh, 165, Beta. 47. <laughs> <laughs> guys, uh, uh, guys watching, not, so you know, we like to punk each other. So you might see some of that. It's, it's nothing personal. It's all fun. <laughs> and uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not including last year. I'm including the year before, before COVID tanked everything. But I was pulling 150. All right. Jason Bible. Uh, 43. Five, 11, about 100, down to about 175 pounds now. And uh, last year, right at seven figures. I'm a real estate guy, so if that helps anybody out there. Cool. Robert? Yeah, I'm 46, uh, 185 pounds, uh, 5'11. And last year, I um, pulled in about 150K USD. <clears throat> All right. Steve from accounting. Hey, good evening to everybody. Uh, six foot three, 245 on a 32 inch waist. Uh, my income varies depending upon what I'm doing. Last year was a lot of uh, Oconus work, so I made 250. This year I'm on pace to make 150. All right, Chad. Cool. Uh, 50 years old, just turned 50. Um, six foot tall, 230 pounds. And uh, last year was around the 125 mark. All right, so you guys now have some frame on, oh, looks like Moff's here. What's up, brother? Yo. Welcome. Clap chaser. Yeah, Moff the weird. Younger. A dub the Moff the Younger. Here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get that off your face. Right I, there turn my hat around, I turn my hat around to be like Moff. It actually makes you look yeah, better if like I put Moff it there. Right. there we go. <laughs> there you go. Like, just right there. Just I'm going to take there. it out of the way because of the because uh, the stream set up for the eight of us. So, uh, Moff, uh, let people know your age, height, weight, and your annual from last year. Uh, 29, right around six foot. Um, sitting right now about 210. And last year I did like 85, 90, but this year I'm on pace to do about a buck 50. Okay. So, you guys have some frame around who these guys are, age and all that sort of stuff that, you know, that deals with some of the SMB. We're going to be talking about some advanced game stuff tonight around frame and dating and all that. Uh, somebody's in the chat asking where you get the shirt. So this ZFG shirt, you can get off the store tab of the channel. Um, it's available there. It's, it's uh, taken care of by Teespring for me, but thanks for asking. Um, all right. So what do you guys want to start with? Because there's so much we could talk about. I mean, I usually do these for about 90 minutes. 
Um, and I like to leave some time for, for call in, but every once in a while, like I get like a DM from somebody or, or there's some really good conversation. Actually, Irishman, let's start with you. Cause you DM me the other week and you said something along the lines of dude, like this shit you actually talk about works. Um, what, what was your big aha moment? Like what was your eye opener with, with stuff that you didn't previously think that worked as far as, you know, like advanced dating techniques that you discovered through experience does work. Holding frame. I, it hit me like a train in the last few months. Um, and I, I think I told Jason when I was, you know, as I said, I'm 47 and I'm in some bar and I'm, I'm making out with a 26 year old girl. And first talk going through my head was screw Cooper. He's right again. Damn. You know? <laughs> Um, oh, that. That was, that was pretty funny. Yeah. But the, the, the thing that I learned most is it's better to hold frame and lose the girl than lose frame and live your life on your knees or live the relationship on your knees. And I went to, through a situation the last couple of weeks where a girl flaked on me for dinner. Yeah, yeah. So, tell that story. Yeah. So I, I, I cut her off. And, you know, I, I spoke to a couple of you guys in the community and, and they were like, well, don't be like butthurt, ghost her. Just say, cool, no problem. So 24 hours later, I said, cool, no problem. And then I just dropped it after that. I went on about my life doing my stuff because I learned I, if she's not coming into my frame, I'm not going into her frame. I'm not going to chase her blue pill beta me in the past. Would have went after her, would have texted her and said, hey, you want to come out Wednesday instead? Some nonsense like that. So I just went on about my life. Friday, I get this text and I just message her back and I say, let's talk. So we talk and, you know, she says uh, she's really into me and all that. And I said, look, I just want you to know I have standards. I said, I do not buckle to those standards. You flaked on dinner. If you want to go back out with me, you're going to take me out to my favorite restaurant, which was last night. I said, and you're going to pay for it and you're going to buy me drinks and you're mm -hmm. going to apologize. And I was like, I ZFG mode. I'm like, I don't care. You know, I, I said all those things I never thought I'd say in the in the past to a girl you're going to apologize to me you're going to take me to dinner so you know all that stuff happened we went out last night we had a great time and and this is you know one thing i want to emphasize is holding frame is not bossing on chicks or winning or getting one over on them it's having self-respect and i said to moff earlier if you were if you're a young guy listening to this this podcast and you have never walked off the lot from a used car dealer you won't be able to hold frame you have to be able to walk away from something that you like and like it a lot if you can't do that, frame's gone. Yeah. Um, just, just real quick, Jaron. If you click the link that I DM'd you in that Facebook group chat, it should open up. Um, it should open up on a, a Chrome browser. It'll open up on a mobile device. So just hit that link, and you'll be able to join us here. All right, but um, Jason, you've had some experiences around frame lately too. Do you want to do you want to talk about that a little bit and the importance of it and yeah, you know, what you like? You know, it's interesting. I was, you know, the last kind of long-term relationship I was in, which I ended, I don't know, five, six months ago. Um, things were great for the first five or six months. And then, you know, for whatever reason, you know, things just kind of went sideways, like all of a sudden. And um, one of the things I think the folks at home need to kind of recognize is that all these guys are, are relatively high value guys, right? All make pretty decent money. I, I don't know a lot of these guys like in person, but we talked enough that this is a really good, high quality group of people. And so, you know, you really want a woman in your life that is going to match the lifestyle that you've got. Otherwise it turns to a complete mess. And, uh, you know, I was dating a girl for a while and, it, and it's that uh, death by a thousand cuts, right? I think you say like a million concessions where at first you're like, oh, it's not a big deal. Cause I've got 900 other things going on. Something happens, reschedule, whatever. But then things really went from from not so great to bad. And I was like, wait a second, is this especially for me since I was married so long. So, you know, I went back to the community and said, hey, guys, is any of this normal? And all you guys are like, uh, this is there's something else going on here, dude. You you can't be in a relationship like this. And so uh, that was kind of the, you know, the big example of that is is, uh, hey, you and I are not going to work out in this, you know, in this kind of lifestyle. So. I think you just stand your ground and you, you know, it's not one of these uh, ultimatums and if you do this, it's going to happen. It's, hey, look, I just don't date people that do X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. it, was really, it was literally that simple. Hey, I'm just, I just don't date people that do, that do the same. If you want to do these, that's your lifestyle. It's great, but that's just not for me. Yeah, it's setting some boundaries and having some dignity, yeah? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's, and, and truth be told, it's, 
you know, a lot of things that we talked about at the very beginning of a relationship. I'm a pretty public person, at least here in the Texas market. Mm -hmm. So one of the conversations we had when we first started dating, I said, look, you're going to be judged way more harshly than I ever will. Because I'm kind of, I got like a little bad boy flavor to me, which everybody's gotten used to because I've been doing this for a couple of years now. But the gals that I bring into my life said, look, you know, you're going to be judged pretty harshly. There's some things you probably can and can't do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, doing shots, <laughs> doing shots at the networking event with all your, your peers is probably not something that's conducive to a long-term relationship, right? So it's stuff like that where it was like, hey, I could see the writing on the wall there. But this is not, this is not gonna work. So you just say, you just say hey, I'm not gonna do this. And, and of course, as you guys know, lo and behold, she starts texting me again and all that. And then as of, you know, I already had another conversation with her weeks ago where I was like, I don't think this is really gonna work out. So. In any case, following one of Rolo's rules, um, but yeah, that's that was my experience. It literally is. If you go through Rolo's book, one of the if you if there's anything that you can do, the one thing you do is is that frame the issue of frame. Hey, this is my life. This is how it's going to work. Happy to have you come along, but here's the here's the box. Here's the confines in which this is going to be successful. And, it, and if it goes outside of that, outside of that frame, and again, you know, as guys, you've got to have reasonable frame. It can't be unreasonable. Right. But, you know, if you can't really stay within these rules, I mean, probably got to find somebody else. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's just a matter of fit. And why wouldn't you want to establish that early on, especially if you're the kind of guy that's looking for a longer term relationship with a woman to kind of enter your enter your life and compliment it? And, you know, for some guys, that might just mean dating. It might be an LTR. It might mean having kids with them. Right. I mean. Why would you want to do it with somebody that's going to complicate your life? And that's why I put that emphasis on the idea that frame is important. And and it's much easier to set uh, that part of the relationship early on than it is to try to fix something a year, three years down the road that's already been broken and already has a track record of being broken that you need to, you know, like reassemble and try to turn into something useful. It's, it's, it's next to impossible, if anything, you know, I would say. Um, Jaron, I saw you nod your head there. Did you want to contribute to that? You're muted if you just hit the mic. Uh, yeah, there you go. I got no audio on you, bro. No audio. Nothing. <laughs> Can't hear you. All right. Um, Moff, did you want to chime in too? Well, I had something a little bit different. Uh, I mean, I, I think the biggest thing that I've learned, it's I guess two big things. I think the first thing is I hear guys talk a lot or guys that don't really know what they're talking about will say things along the line of you have to just act like you don't care, right? You just got to have it. You just da, da, da. have a mindset. Yeah, we hear you. Um, yeah. It's, you know, you got to act like you don't care and then women will, will want you or they'll chase you, but it's not enough. Like you can't, that's like can't, basic level conversations. That's like game one Oh one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, but it's, it, I, don't, I don't look at it as an act as if scenario. I think yeah. you have to get to, and this is something that uh, Irishman and I talk about a lot, where we've both gotten to this point where we, we've embodied this I don't care mentality, right? And I think that the biggest thing that I've, that I've seen and, and where I've sort of developed is I have the ability now to, the BS detector goes off earlier than ever before. Right. Mm -hmm. There's things that I can pick up on now that I wouldn't have picked on before or things that I would have let slide before that I wouldn't now. Um, I'll tell a really quick story. And this is something that I put in the, the, the group and in the community um, that even I was surprised at, at, at the way I handled this, because this is something I, I never would have done a year ago or five years ago or whatever that may be. Match with this girl on a dating app. And right off the bat, she's trying to lead the conversation, saying, let's go somewhere where you can bring the dog. I want to bring the dog. And I'm deflecting saying no he's got to sit here and he's got to watch my you know the security cameras at the restaurant to make sure you're not a serial killer or like whatever it is that i see <laughs> but just getting her off of that not engaging not responding in a serious way um and then what happened was we had plans um i texted her maybe a th 30 minutes before we were supposed to meet up uh and she goes oh we were going to go to a certain place certain time right i set the date and she goes oh actually i'm at this other place come meet me here and I'd already made reservations. I already done this days in advance. And I said, no, 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 no. Like, I'm going to go to this place. I'll see you at seven. And she goes, well, I'm at the bar at this place. So I'll see you here when you get here. <laughs> and so I just wanted to double check. I said, okay, uh, are you saying that you're not going to meet me 
at this place like we planned, like that you agreed to. Yeah, so I'll see you when you, when you get to the place that I am, like smiley face or whatever. I said, nah, you won't, like have a great night. I unmatched, <laughs> and deleted her number. And it's from that point, people can say, oh, wow, like, uh, like whatever, man. Like, yeah, you're so alpha, but okay. It's this thing of she showed her cards mm-hmm. very early and she was most likely going to be difficult to deal with trying to lead it and I just don't have time for women like that in my life so now yeah, so what were your options at that time would, would be like, comply and and show up where she wanted you to to go or hold firm and be like hey look you know we made plans for this place i got reservations are you going to be there or not right like you didn't really have that much in the way of options she didn't leave you with that much in the way of, of options right. and we all know that women want to be led by a guy you know they want to look up to a giant they don't truthfully want to lead a guy but that's one of the narratives that a lot of guys, you know, deal with today is women try to become more like men, you know, because they've been told to by this toxic version of feminism that, you, you know, men and women are equal and blah, blah, blah. So, of course, they're going to try to play these games on you and you and you handle it perfectly. Um, you didn't get the desired outcome. I mean, you basically wasted your night, but you handle it perfectly. Right. Well, and that's what some guys will say. It's like, well, it's like, well, you need to punish her for bad behavior because that'll end up getting you what you want, you know, do the takeaway and then she'll come back to you. And it, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Right. And if it doesn't, then you're like, okay, cool. Then you probably weren't going to have fun with her anyway. Probably wasn't worth your time, worth your time and no big deal. But instead I got to, you know, chill at home with my dog and get some work done rather than going and spending money on a chick that was going to be a headache from the get go. So, and in my opinion, you know, I, I won, I didn't lose. Mm. And um, Irishman, with your story with that um, uh, fine lady that that uh, canceled last minute on that dinner, um, you know, you went to the extent of um, because I mean, you you're a culinary guy um, as yeah, a hobby, she, you know, is what we'll say. So I mean, like you had to prepare stuff um, for that evening, and she ended up uh, causing a little bit of havoc with that a few hours before. Did you have alternate plans? Did you invite some friends over? Did you have another plate come over? Like, what did you do to solve that? Um, I, I forget now at this stage, but I just went and did my own thing. I came back from the beach later than I had planned. And, um, you know, I, I, I just, once you start to hold frame and once you start to cut bait, it, it becomes a self-fulfilling, uh, you build confidence and you just go, well, that's that, that's gone. I'll let that go and I'll move on to the next thing and I won't mm-hmm. get butt hurt. One of the best lessons from your book, Rich, is mm-hmm. I was on one of my walks. I was listening to your book and you were on about, um, genuine burning desire and that the girls have to show genuine burning desire in the apps and the chats, everything. So I stopped your audio book and I took up Bumble. I took up Tinder and I unmatched with every single chick on there because they weren't hounding or harassing me or coming after me. And now I know what genuine bur- burning desire looks like. I don't have to deal with the other crap. I don't mm. have to go ask permission. Can I charm you? Can I hang out with you? No. If they like you from the get go, like the, the, this current girl said, you know, she said to me, I've never heard it before, but embrace, like what I've learned from your group is embrace your personality, embrace yeah. who you are. <clears throat> this girl said something to me the other night. It knocked me over. She said, you are beyond the most full of shit guy I've ever met in my entire life. <laughs> she said, okay, it's not even close. And she says, I'm hopelessly attracted to it. Okay. <laughs> I was like, wait, okay, wait, girl, wait, let's go. Huh? Uh, that's hilarious. Wait, Rich, you wrote a book? What's know. that? I said, oh, you wrote a book? I had no idea. Yeah, I wrote this book, apparently. It's called The Unplugged Alpha. You guys should check it out. It's on Amazon. Um, Jaron, you, you wanted to chime in before, but your mic wasn't working. And you're still muted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was I was late to the call, so I'm a definite noob when it comes. <laughs> oh, you're muted again, dude. Am I good? Can you hear me? You're good. Yeah, you're good. I don't know why it's <laughs> muting me. All right, chime in. Oh, this goddamn. Oh, okay, good, good. I, on my I, on my end, it says everything's fine. So I'm just looking at uh, like I don't see the same thing. Um, so obviously, you can see I've been having technical difficulties. Uh, I've been a little late to get things going today. I just came back into the U.S. for the first time this year, so I landed in San Diego. Just got up in a hotel room, and so I think my comments on frame might be a little different because the last six months I've been in Central America 
as a lone American building an outsourced sales team for a company based in Miami uh, for, for an old business partner of mine. And down there, they treated me almost like I was a celebrity. It was really weird. It was really fun. It first I got down there, got on the Tinder apps, got on Bumble, got on all the you know standard dating apps, definitely connected it to my Instagram because you want the Tinder to Instagram funnel going and you want all your cool stuff on there so people can say, wow, okay, this guy offers an awesome experience. And then on my Tinder app, I set from the get-go exactly what I'm looking for. So um, when I was going to piggyback onto the comment earlier, it was, uh, Richie mentioned that you have to set clear expectations from the get-go. I recommend or advocate even on the dating apps from the get-go, put right in your Tinder description exactly what it is you're looking for. Um, I just landed to San Diego, so mine is always, uh, it's something like 420 snacks, snuggles, and sunsets, dot, 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 and a serenade if you're lucky. And then I put a uh, finger pointing to my Instagram. They can go to my Instagram. They can see that I've lived in San Diego, see that I've been abroad, see that I've been cool, been doing cool stuff, see cool cars, see me at the gym, see me playing guitar. There's videos uploaded. And they get an idea kind of in their head. You get that hamster spinning of what the experience or what the fantasy will look like. And mm -hmm. you want them to you, you, you want them to to all girls play a detective on social media. So you want to give them just enough. You want to give them crumbs to where they can start putting this fantasy together in their head. And guys, if you remember back to your beta days, um, a lot of us came to the red pill space because there was that one or the one nightus that absolutely crushed us. Or in my case, the few times that happened, that same fantasy that you had for that girl that brought you here, you, you want her to get that going in, in her head. And if you can set the tone or set the experience or set the expectation from the beginning and then just hold it consistently, you're absolutely fine. And mm -hmm. I'll be honest, there's there's a time in El Salvador I did, uh, I had a main girl, really liked her, real pretty girl model, and I, I liked, I, I had the fantasy of, oh, well, I can live in high class because I'm in a third world country, and I've got this beautiful girl next to me. Sure enough, took her to an event, she left with a professional soccer player in the country, and I was bummed for a week or two, and then I realized, oh, okay, I'm fine. Um, they hired me to do a commercial for their tourism industry, which will air in the Middle East this October, which is hilarious uh, to me because I'm not Central American. But uh, I got that going. And once there's some publicity around that, then all of a sudden my inbound Instagram or tender Instagram funnels started going again. Once you have abundance, then it's easier to hold frame because you just don't tolerate stuff. Um, if I look at my Instagram right now, I haven't been in San Diego for a while. So you always put that you're coming back to town there's girls that'll pop in be like, oh, hey, what have you been up to? Let's hang out. Um, and then you just you just field the offers. Um, and usually when it comes to meeting these girls, I no longer rearrange my day for them. Um, I have a flexible schedule since I work for myself. So I was in Mexico City last week. Um, there were girls that are like, hey, I'm coming into town for a work meeting. Let's meet at 8 a.m. for coffee. And I said, that, that's absolutely fine. I'll meet them for 8 a.m. Uh, I lived in a real I was in a real nice part of town and said, hey, you know what? Better what? Let's just go up on the roof and we'll do a picnic up here. Once they come over, you already know it's done. Um, and then they come, they go, they let you know there's a, when they let you know there's a hard out too. This I learned last summer in San Diego. Um, and they say, oh, hey, I have to leave in half an hour. I have to leave in an hour. That means that they're there for a reason and you need, they expect you to make your move. Um, and if you do and you get shot down, there was one girl in Mexico City where uh, she said, hey, I got to go in an hour, about like 30 minutes in, I made my move. Uh, shot me down, try, try to get in at minute 45, shot me down at the hour. I'm like, hey, I'll grab your Uber. You know, uh, it was nice meeting you. I enjoyed your company. And then she pounced me. <laughs> it was, I, I, I still can't figure that one out. But when you're in conservative culture, sometimes that happens. But tying mm -hmm. everything back to it is really, you just want to pretend like you're, I used to do this uh, on first Tinder dates, and it's really fun. Uh, sit down at a cafe with a girl and say, okay, let's let's narrate these people's lives or let's narrate this evening like it's a story and get her in a fantasy because all, all women have a fantasy, and especially in California. Um, when I lived in L.A., I'd tell girls, hey, I'm going to cast you for a role. Like, let's let's be in a movie. What, who do you want to be tonight? Oh, I want to be the undercover. I want to be the other undercover. Uh, I, I don't know what words I can say on YouTube. Uh, sassy girl with a uh, cruddy attitude. <laughs> And I'm like, okay, cool. I'll be the James Bond 007 double identity guy. And then just let the night roll that way. Um, it really, what they're looking for, I think I say girls a lot of times, they're mm. not, they're not, they're not looking for sex like guys are. They're looking for validation. They're looking for attention and they will use sex mm. as an instrument or a tool to get that. So that's actually that a really mind, good strategy. Give her the uh... feelings, the fantasy, the whatever you want. And then just be a byproduct of it. Yeah, that's a beautiful strategy, especially in LA. I'll, I'll, I'll let someone else have the floor for a second. Um, who else wants to chime in on the on the topic of the importance of frame when it comes to advanced dating? 
Anybody got any experiences or, or stories? It. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Um, so I'm a little bit different from some of the other guys here. Uh, I'm on marriage. Who's that? Is that Steve, Steve talking? Um, yeah, that's me. Steve. Okay, um, sorry. Go ahead. So, yeah, so again, I'm 40. I'm on marriage number two. Uh, kind of what brought me into the space was the concept of frame and then later on the concept of vetting. Um, so first marriage fell apart uh, 100%. It was one of those beta through a thousand concessions. And mm -hmm. I realized it years in. Last Marriage lasted a little over a decade. I realized it several years in um, and made the attempt to kind of reestablish frame. Uh, at that point, it was too late. So things fell apart, went to spin plates. Um, I was for a few years, 100% cold approach, no dating apps, no nothing. It was all based on repeat encounters with, with girls um, and building conversation naturally that way. And during that, I had a particular girl mm -hmm. that kept rising to the top of always having a good time with her. Um, definitely the easiest to get along with. And from my perspective, the transition to LTR was something I wanted um, for my for my own reasons. One, uh, my work is kind of a pain in the ass. Uh, and two, I, I personally find at this point the game of spinning plates to be somewhat exhausting. Uh, so I realized mm -hmm. a little bit of a divergence there from the rest of the crowd, and that, that's cool. But for me, uh, thinking about stability for my kids, long-term prospects of, of having a partner that I'm building life with, LTR was right for me. Um, and one of the things so early on, she kind of made the made the ask of, hey, you know, where's this going? I said, well, listen, I have a great time with you. Uh, but what kind of commitment are you looking for and what kind of commitment are you providing? So she kind of mm -hmm. laid it out. Hey, I want this to be exclusive. I said, OK. Um, and a few weeks in, probably three or four, nothing had changed on her end. But I had cut everything off, gone exclusive. So I called her on it. I said, hey, look, we had this conversation, you know, X number of weeks ago. Things have changed on my end in the following manners, one, two, three. They have not changed on your end. I said, so I've overly emotionally invested. You're taking the driver's seat here. I said, I'm done. Um, had a great time, but this isn't working for me. She says, okay. Calls me back the next day. Says, hey, look, I thought a lot about what you said. Um, you know, I, uh, I really want this to work out. I thought kind of about the items you laid out. Here's my plan. Would you give me another 30 days to turn this around? I said, let's meet for dinner. So I met, I said, unlock your phone, set it on the table. And she does it. And I said, I'm going to go through it. I want to see all your social media. I want to see all your messages. And she said, okay, but why? I said, what I want to know is, are you flaking on me right now because the story about your work is legit or are you flaking on me because you're, you're seeking attention and you're looking for me to fulfill something where you're, you remain in control. And she said, go ahead. Went through her Facebook, went through her Instagram, went through her messages, went through the whole phone. And it turned out it was legit. Um, three years later, we're still going strong. Um, so what I stress to guys that are looking to transition from plate spin into LTR is one, vet, vet her behavior, better behavior with coworkers, better behavior with friends, better behavior on social media, vet her family, what's her interaction with her family like, and then back up the things that she says she's going to do with the actions that follow. And if those things don't jive, you need to run. Um, so, so uh, Steve, out question it. for you. You mentioned that um, she gave you the where do we stand talk and then wanted to be uh, monogamous with you, which you agreed to, but it didn't sound like she was holding up her end of the bargain during that time? No, she stayed exclusive. Uh, where she lacked was um, time commitment, energy commitment. Oh, uh, I see. The, Okay. Personal emotional investment into the relationship that that I'm I expect because in my mind that kind of plays into genuine burning desire. Okay. You know, if you have genuine burning desire, if you do consider me to be, be that best option, you know I'm not going to be an afterthought in your day to day life. Uh, I, I'm I'm curious about the other guys in the panel right now. Like, what are your thoughts are on a um, you know pop uh, phone scavenging hunt? Um, I'll give you my experience. I am, I'm not going to ask. I think there's, uh, you know, I can certainly see that some guys that it makes a lot of sense and it's something they want to do, but I think there's so many other behaviors that you'll be able to pick up on where it's like, <clears throat> it's either, well, that's probably the best way to put it. You'll see another behavior uh, where you're like, okay, this is not, you're, 
we're clearly at two different places here. And, you know, I think where it really comes into play is, you know, is this going to turn into a long-term relationship or not? This is just some gal you're seeing. It's like, well, who cares? Um, but if this has turned into something more serious, and I agree with Steve 100%, uh, checking those references, if you will, will tell you everything. Um, but uh, I, I don't want to go through some chick's phone, to be honest with you. I, maybe I just oh, I'll tell you guys why I think it's actually not a bad idea. And I agree with Steve because, you know, she ended up giving him the where do we stand talk. And he's like, OK, fine, I'll abandon my sexual strategy of unlimited access to unlimited women. All right. But then the spidey senses started to tangle and he wanted to verify for himself. And I don't think that there's anything wrong with that, especially given the conversation that he had and, and what his relationship goals are. Right. I'm, I'm in the same I'm in the same boat. Um you know, with my with my current LTR, it's not like, you know, every freaking second, but once a month, once every two months, if I just happen to see your phone, I'll pick it up, scroll through the text and see if there's anything weird there. Mm -hmm. Cause she, she's yeah. a, she does, she does outside sales and 90% of her clientele are and men. And I know how, I know what the deal is. So, you know, yeah. And I just, and it's not malicious or anything like that. It's just like, I'm, I'm going to make sure that everything is straight and if it's not straight it's going to be confronted immediately it's just mm -hmm. the deal she knows that yeah, I, I agree with that and, and in my opinion you know i, I don't uh -oh. i don't want to to promote an ongoing culture of mistrust <clears throat> right um, and, and kind of the way i couched it in the moment is is you know i'm asking for this because of the following criteria you and i agreed to there's behaviors xyz that don't align to this you're telling me you want something different, that you want a second chance. I'm receptive to that, but I need some currency and coin in the realm to know that what you're asking for is legitimate and that I'm not just getting strung along. Um, mm -hmm. And so when she Fair agreed enough. to that, I think that was A, it was, it showed heavy investment on her part that, hey, I'm willing to open the books to this guy. Um, I'm willing to show him, you know, the, the records he's looking for to, to get that buy in. Um, you know, because again, if, if hypergamy is not satisfied or it's satisfied only in that moment, you are setting yourself up for failure. Um, but when she, in my opinion, in that moment, she's willing to open the books and willing to talk about everything. Um, that gives me that, you know, as you mentioned, Rich, that extra reassurance. Okay. Hey, I am the hypergamous best option here. She mm -hmm. is being genuine in the things she's talking about. The story she's telling me about the work life is, is, is genuine. And there's not the, the social media attention seeking behavior that I think wrecks a lot of women in relationship. Right on. Um, so Derek. About, I, well, I don't mean to cut everybody off and jump in for no, it. No, go ahead, go ahead, Moff. Yeah. I'm okay. kind of curious, well, cause look, like I'm curious the rest of the guys, especially Jaren's thoughts or whoever, but this idea of getting somebody being congruent with you, the mm -hmm. idea uh, well, I need to see your phone because I need to do this. And I need to do that. And this idea of logically listing out the reasons why, as opposed to just, you know, you, you decided you were going to commit and you were going to say, okay, we're going to be monogamous, but you don't see the behaviors changing in a positive way. So, you know, in my opinion, the best way to, to, to change that behavior is to give less of your attention, less of your time. I mean, it worked out in the end, it seems like, and she seemed open for it and that's great. But I mean, I, I'm curious what other guys think when it's, it, in retrospect, you know, was that the way that you guys would handle it or, or is it just like, okay, like I'm going to, I'm going to go back to what I was doing because I'm not getting the results that I was promised. Well, it worked because it, it didn't work because of any logical explanation. When it, it comes worked, to checking it phones, that's because it worked because it gave her a huge emotional response. That's the reason it worked. Ahead, there's no, there's no explain anything logically. It made her have an emotional response. It made her feel like, oh, she gave her an oh shit moment. And because she had that emotional response, that's what connected her to him. It wasn't any logic at all. Go ahead, Jaron. You're about to say something. <laughs> Can you hear us, Jaron? I think there's a lag on my microphone. Yeah. yeah, I think there's a lag on my microphone. I think your potato's so broken, bro. You got to charge the batteries. The gas. <laughs> Yes, I can. I can hear you fine, uh, but I think okay, there's cool. a lag. I think there's a lag for me to them. Okay, that's fine. Um, it's a USB. Did you want to yeah, chime in on that one right too? Um, mm -hmm. It's funny. The slowest internet I've had in the last eight months is the internet in the U.S. So, um, there you go. <laughs> yes. 
All right. Um, so, Derek, as far as checking like phones, phones um, I think you have to be real careful with that one because you're not. Okay. Go ahead. Carry on. Oh, we're having technical difficulties again with the potato. All right, Derek. What? Hey. <laughs> Go ahead, Derek. I want to hear your opinion. Um. So I'm I'm pretty split on the whole phones issue, but uh, my whole my whole thing with frame is you got to know who you are before you before you invite anyone else into it. Um, you know, I just moved to this new city on the other side of the country in the U.S., and I'm here for a limited time. I travel a lot for work, so you know when I'm in town, I want to have a good time. And uh, I've been seeing this chick a little bit younger than me for a couple months. She sat, she sat me down, had the, uh, what are we talk? And I was just like, look, I'm here to have a good time. And you know, I think you're wonderful. I've had a blast with you, but I'm not looking for anything too serious right now. And, uh, lo and behold, she was like, all right, not, not feeling this right now. Wanted something. How old was she? She 20, she's 22. Okay. She's turned 22 at the time. All right. Uh, didn't talk to her for three months, you know, kind of felt bad that it ended so abruptly, but then, Lo and behold, you know, about a month ago at two o'clock in the morning, I get a drunken booty call and now she's coming over in two hours. So, mm -hmm. you know, you just got to hold your frame and realize that they're going to try to, you know, bring you into their society. Yeah, that's, yeah. Um, yeah, that's a really yeah. good point. Cause I mean, like you made your in intentions and your expectations clear. <clears throat> she said that didn't work for her. So yeah. she bounced, yeah. but she decided to come back when it worked out for her though, right? I mean, you know, you, you then became a, a better option or an acceptable option a few months later. Uh, Rich, you, you also got a set precedent from very early on. What, what I've noticed, like what you said in one of your, one of your clips is like, you know, I'm off to put my dent in the universe. When, when you first meet girls on dates off the apps and they'll say, what, what are you looking for? I said, I'm not really looking for anything. I got my plan. I know where I'm going. I know what I'm doing. I said, mm -hmm. you want to get in the passenger seat and come along for the ride? It's going to be fun. Let's see where it goes. Mm -hmm. uh, so, because you got to say like, well, I, I, you know, you don't, I'm looking for the one true love. I want a girl that I can drink hot coffee with on crisp fall mornings and put a sweater around. No, dude, I'm about my shit. And you'll, if you want to come, you will be entertained with me. And <laughs> they want an adventure. And I, and, I, and it's uh, Derek made an excellent point. You got to know who you are. And as I said, one of the benefits of joining the community and speaking with younger guys like Moff is I've kind of embraced my, you know, the phrase I used for myself earlier. I've kind of embraced all that, you know, Bill Burr meets Jared Butler in a rom com, and I love it. And girls seem to like it too. Yeah. Um, Jaron, did you get your mic working again? Yeah, there's a major delay. <laughs> Something's going on with that. <laughs> he might as well be on the planet Neptune. With he's, he's got the spinning wheel of death happening right uh, now. It just crashed. <laughs> All right. Um, what I was curious about something. I wanted to ask Chad because I think I, I've had some good chats with Chad on like my stereo show, and I think Derek, there's an echo on your end. If you go on mute, uh, um, yeah. yeah. This there is something go. that Chad and I talk about a bunch, and I think this is something that is really permeating the space and just in general is this idea about uh, men need to be more emotional, men need to be more vulnerable, et cetera, et cetera. I, I would love to hear Chad's perspective because I know that it's changed from like day one or early weeks of dating to now where, you know, it's why don't you open up more? Why don't you talk about this more, this and that? Or tell me what's going on because Chad is, if you guys don't know, he runs businesses, a very successful guy. So um, I'd love to kind of hear his take on on how he's maintained frame um, throughout this LTR. There's, uh, you know, you would think um, over a long period of time, there might be some more, you know, emotional talks and stuff like that, but there's less. It's actually less. I literally, I'm like, this is how it's going to be. This is what's going on. This weekend is, you know, this weekend we're going here or we make a plan or whatever. But as far as like, <clears throat> um, you know, she'll ask me, you know, of course, I mean, I've known her for four years. She'll ask me, you know, how's your day? Stuff like that. And I'll be like, 
awesome or you know well day went to shit but i'm turning it around and you know by the end of the day the the ship will be going in the direction i want it to go because you know if it if every day is perfect i mean come on that's not reality so i'm willing to say yeah my day was shitty today but i got it turned around no big deal how was your day you know but any emotion in the relationship is projected by her I bring, I, I focus on bringing emotion out of a woman, any, any girl that I've ever, that I date, you know, since I've come into this space six years ago, um, I focus on the emotional connection because like I, like we had said before, a woman wants to be in a fairy tale. They want to be in a love story and you being the emotional tampon of that arrangement is not a fairy tale for a woman. So for me, it's, you know, holding the frame, being masculine. This is what I'm doing. This is where I'm going. Get on the ship. It's sailing with or without you kind of thing. That has been through the whole relationship. And any time, I mean, I literally pay attention. Any time that I just had a bad day and I'm you know, in a bad mood or whatever, she completely changes. Her countenance, the way she acts, the way she talks, the tone of her voice will change a woman literally if she's in your frame her whole entire emotional state will change with your emotional state changing yeah so the more you can be that yeah the more that you can be that rock you're a fucking mountain nothing is going to move you you the world could collapse you're gonna rebuild it you still got this man meteors coming to strike the earth yeah i got that babe don't worry about it i got this yeah that's the thing yeah. And, and so, and it, cause it's all about emotion. It, there's no explanation. There's no logic. There's no nothing. It's all about emotion and the emotional response you bring out of a woman. That's you, it. You uh, uh, touched on something that was interesting there for a second. I mean, like you were talking about like managing the frame and uh, like even something as simple as I'm not a talkative guy, you know, when it comes to just like small chat, blah, 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 bullshit, you know, like how was your day? What did you think of the weather today? And da, 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 da. And it's like, yeah, I don't have those conversations. So like early on for me, it's, it's, it's straight up. Like, you know, hop on a quick, you know, phone call to coordinate something if you need to, or it's like basic conversations with, with text, but none of this hammering back and forth all night long for hours. I mean, who's got time for that when you got shit to do. Right. Yeah. And then you don't have anything to talk about when you take them on a date on the weekend. Cause you freaking put it all out during the week. Yeah. I mean, that, that, if you want, if you want an advanced game for an LTR, stop fucking talking so much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, good Lord, be, guys. Be a little bit mysterious, guys. You know, it's 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 as definitely going to help can. you more than it hurts you, for sure. Yeah. Let me grab some of these super can. chats. And Frame and really is everything, ultimately. Rule. What's that? I said apply that two-thirds rule. Yeah, exactly. That's mm-hmm. the um, uh, 16 commandments of uh, Poon. Uh, frame really is everything. Ultimately, game is a demonstration of one's ability to maintain mental point of origin. You cannot fake congruence. Work on you first. Much love. Thanks, brother. Appreciate that. Um, there's a couple more that popped in here. Let me grab them real quick. The Irish guy's accent should have its own Tinder Instagram. <laughs> oh, it does. And it's a very good one, in fact. Um, we, we've uh, seen a big improvement in um, in that. Sup, dude? What's your favorite movie from Tarantino? You asking me? Um, I don't know. I'm more of a Guy Ritchie fan, if I'm being honest. But Pulp Fiction is probably one of his best ones. Um, actually... Let's talk about that for a sec, uh, you know, the topic of the Tinder Instagram thing, because you dramatically improved the quality of your and and the um, quality of the matches and the number of matches that you got after you changed your photography. Can you talk about that a little bit, Irishman? Yeah, I, I, I had um, I had done my, um, you, you know, your usual stupid iPhone photography and all that. Yeah, the gym mirror selfie, bro. bro (laughs) Yeah, yeah, (laughs) holding the fish, holding the fish next to an expensive car. Yeah, right. Um, Keep the keep those for if she thinks your profile is fake, though. Those are good for that. (laughs) Yeah. So I I had done those, and you know, my incoming on Tinder and Instagram was, you know, the sweatpants and minivan brigade would in a ten mile radius. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, so then. 
I, again, I took Rich's advice. My buddy is a pro photographer and he was going to be in DC and I was going to be down there the same time as him. So he said, I'll shoot you. And this guy has shot Sharon Stone back in the day, but I didn't put my legs up around my ears for the shoot. So, <laughs> um, he done some, he done some really good shots. And, you know, I told him, I said, do not touch these up. I said, you know, wrinkles add character. I like my Steve McQueen look or whatever. And um, I, I, I uploaded his photos and got some feedback from another site you suggested, Rich Photo Feeler. And, um, you know, I went from the, the sweatpants minivan brigade to, you know, the local entrepreneur, the VP at the finance place up the street. It, you know, it, it just it resonated a lot better. And it says... To, to people as well, because I've come across a million photos of a hot girl and her bedroom behind her looks like Nagasaki or Hiroshima after, you know, <laughs> 1945. I'm like, I couldn't, a grenade couldn't do that much damage to a bedroom. And I'm like, you know what? I'm swiping left because if this is the mess you're living in, I don't want to know you. So it, you, you kind of have to put it out there that, yeah, I can dress up nice. I can go out into nature. I can do all this stuff. And, and just the pro photographer it's it's money really well spent. Yeah. Um, let me grab this here on um, money because this is kind of a frame question, but in an LTR. So what if your LTR Ooh. starts making more money than you do? Are you basically done? Um, I've said many times, um, and I'll and I'll just repeat it. I mean, um, more like women are um, initiating divorces like eight out of ten times, right? And one of the biggest precursors to a woman initiating a divorce, like being the one leaving the relationship, is she gets a, a big raise, she gets a promotion and a big raise, any combination of those things, because women don't want to look across and down at a guy, they want to look across and up at a guy, they want to look up towards a giant. So I always tell guys, look, you know, the clock is probably start, starting to kick, like tick down to the end of the relationship. Is it going to end? I don't know. Maybe you got laid off or maybe... You had to take a uh, lateral, you know, position change in your job and you will make more money in, in six months. And she's a patient woman and she actually digs your vibe. And, you know, her making 10 or 15 thousand dollars more than you a year isn't a huge deal for her at that time. But, you know, female nature, right? Like women are hypergamous, so they need to feel like they have uh, settled with their be best option. Um, on a consistent basis. I mean, if they feel like they haven't settled with their best option, then again, you know, don't be surprised if she leaves you at some point. That's that's just, you know, on a balance of probabilities, how things need to work. So is that an important part of managing frame in a relationship? Yeah, of course it is. Does anybody want to chime in on that or have any personal experience? Yeah, I will. I do. Go ahead, Steve. I, that's my life every day. All right. Um, so my, <clears throat> my woman has made more money than me for since the day we met. And I think... Everything Rich says is, I mean, goodness, 99% of the time, true. Um, the way I think you can work around it is by being a giant in your purpose. So during other conversations, um, you know, I would say that my woman is is relatively, I don't know what the proper phrase is, red pillow where we'll say. Um, she reads her own series of books talking about the differences between men and women and and how that psychological structure differs. And she talks some of her friends down off the ledge about it. And she will say flat out that one of the things she found most attractive about me was that, you know, her quote is, the people I answered to deferred to you. She says, you absolutely own the space every time you walk into the room. You're not a dick, but you inspire confidence in everybody around you. The topic of money outside of anything other than joint household finances has not one time come up. I think as long as you are crushing your purpose, as long as, as like in my, in my situation, for example, I can make a lot more money the more time I spend overseas. So the, the compromise that she knows she's making to have me around, and then also I choose so I can be around my kids, um, is that I leave income on the table. She's more marketable stateside. And her knowing that I have, you know, I'm internationally recognized in what I do. Um, she's been around people who work with and for me and seen the deference and respect that I get because of that capability. I, 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 it doesn't have to be a death sentence, I guess is what I'm saying, but you have got to manage your own personal sense of confidence in what you're doing. You have to be a giant and an expert at what you're doing and then maximize it within those, within that, that framework. 
Perfect. Um, Moff, did you want to chime in on that too? I, I saw you nodding your head earlier. I've got yeah, one too. Okay, yeah, cool. well, I think uh, first we got to, I mean, how old is this guy, right? I mean, we got age obviously comes into play, comes in as a definite factor. I mean, if if you're in your early 20s and you're in school to be a doctor or a lawyer and, and she sees your potential for later in life, then typically not a big deal. Now, if you're 35 and doing that same thing, and you decide that you're going to stop, you know, flipping burgers and decide you're going to go find your find your purpose later in life, you're, you're pretty much done. Um, I, I tend to think that while it can work in some situations. And I equate it to like, take height, for example, too, right? Short guys like, okay, level up in other areas. If your woman makes more money than you, okay, level up in other areas. It just means you have to work harder to sort of maintain that frame. I, I tend to lean towards you're better off um, staying away from those. I mean, if you're already in LTR, then then I, I get it. Uh, walking away may not be just the easy choice. Um, I, I tend to try to avoid women or I, I don't encourage men to go after women that are making more money or on the same level as them financially, just because it is extra work and it, you do have to uh, work harder. In an LTR, I mean, again, it's going to depend on your age as well, but I, I definitely echo Steve's point where as long as you're buttoned up in other areas and a lot of time it's the illusion of frame too, it's the act as if, right? If you're mm -hmm. still uh, carrying on Absolutely. and you're still maintaining the frame and your attitude around her is, is not changing. I, I think you're on the right track. I just think it takes a very hot, it's a, it's an elevated level of frame and an elevated level of game that most guys are not going to be able to do. So it's to, to Moff's point, I agree on, with everything Moff said. so to Moff's point on professional women that make more money than you, um, I was going to spend some time on that, but I've got a video that I've broken it all down on. It's like a 17 minute piece. And it's like, this is what you need to expect when dating professional women. That'll be out in the next couple of weeks. So that'll fully break that down. Robert, I saw you muting and unmuting yourself. Did you want to chime in on that too? Yeah. Maybe just one, one point as far as kind of income is concerned. I mean, if you've got your FU money mm -hmm. and your net worth is 20 X, 25 X of her, and your purpose, to Steve's point, maybe it's changed. For me personally, I'm committing myself to a lot of community service, volunteering. That's the debt in the universe I want to make now. I've accomplished so much my professional care, uh, career. I'm just focusing on other things. So, you know, you hate to kind of really focus in on the money part, but really at the end of the day, if you're set and you're not necessarily got the annual um, equivalent, there's other things that you can do to uh, yeah. maintain that frame. Um, yeah, like hypergamy yeah, is more than just how much money you make every year. It's mm -hmm. important, yeah, but it's more than just that. So I got a, I got a real life example of this. When I, was, um, when I was 25, I had this job that was, you know, paid fairly well, but it was, the purpose was very clear and it was very, very conventionally masculine. And I met this woman who uh, worked in the pharmaceutical industry on a sales team and she made quite a bit of money. The, the product they sold was hilarious. It was a uh, it was a pill for if you have a bent dick, it like breaks up the calcium deposit in your dick and allows it to be straight. So, yeah, um, she was a professional woman and she fucking hated being in charge all day and having to make decisions. And when we were together, that was it. I was like, hey, you know what? Show up in a dress, bring a bottle of red wine, be at my place by seven, and we'll go from there. And she absolutely loved that, even though she was clearing at the time probably three times more than what I did. Josh, renegade windman. What's up, brother? I got one on that too, Rich. How you guys doing? Thanks Good, for having me Good. on the stream. Yeah, yeah, traffic, welcome. Uh, <laughs> it's caught in traffic coming leaving the airport. Chad, go ahead. Yeah, um, so I... I definitely echo what Rich is saying about, you know, having money. The money makes it a whole lot easier, no matter what, bar none, 100% of the time. But I spent the first half of my life being a local musician and running martial arts schools. Neither one of those are, you know, big money ticket jobs. But I was always, I had a level of respect in the community. People knew me. I had some, I had, um, I had a status if you want to call it that, um, you know, I, I was able to go out in public. People would recognize me either as the drummer in the band or, <clears throat> oh, you do the, you promote the cage fights or you've got the martial arts school, whatever. 
and never, ever one time had a problem with having a girlfriend, picking up women, anything like that. And money was never even a discussion or an issue, even when I was in relationships. Um, now, currently, because I, I just play for fun and train for fun now um, and concentrate on other things. Now, my current girlfriend, um, the that I guess value proposition, whatever, is that she looks at me as an advisor because she like, uh, you know, for an example, she's got a she's got a cousin that's that's a drug addict that she came in town. I had a long talk with her, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I just because I'm because I'm, I'm able to give advice basically from life experience and just because I've kind of led a different life than most people do in the corporate world, um, I have a different viewpoint on stuff. And so my current girlfriend sees that as a value or it see, she sees that as a status. And even when like with this with this YouTube channel, you know, she's like, you know, oh, I'm excited to see how that works out. I'm excited to see, you know, because she knows that in my heart the entire time i want to help people i want to give i want to give back and she mm -hmm. sees that and she sees that as a status and a value and so yeah, yes and money her, is great a guy like um let's say the guy's making 20 grand more a year 30 year and even 50 grand more a year than what you are but she doesn't admire the guy yeah right like that's like that's a part of the equation of the hypergamy puzzle that some guys just kind of overlook or some of these doomer losers like you know take to the grave and like oh i'm screwed i don't make any money i'll never get anything it's like okay well you've already lost my friend um yeah. admiration is a huge admiration is a huge deal she has and, to look and, up to you and any and any level i mean when you first start dating on to being married for 50 years yep. you have she has to admire you for whatever you do that's why I always tell guys like like if you get married, like if you're gonna raise a family, you can't get lazy. Like like she still has to see you chase excellence, right? Oh yeah. yeah. And to kind of build on that, when it comes to me, oh, go for it, sir. Oh yeah, I still don't know if people can hear me or not on the microphone, but it looks good on my end. Um, when it comes to maintaining go. frame, maintain your internal frame too. So we I got on this point a little bit earlier, but when it comes down to making more money than 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 your wife or not or your girl it, it doesn't really matter um for example <clears throat> these this whole entire year of my life i've probably made the least amount of money i have in my entire career but a year ago i sold all my stuff got out of the covid lockdown california i'm here for three days just tying up some loose ends legally and then i'm, I'm gone um i'll base business in miami i'll be right back in mexico um but when i but i'm honest with women i let them know like hey this is where i'm at um I didn't introduce myself earlier, but I'm, I'm 5'11", I'm 195 to 205 usually, and I try to stay between 10 and 12% body fat. I'm just seeing my abs starting to etch back after coming back from Central America and getting some real food, so I think I'm probably around 12 or so now. But when it comes to the money thing, it, it, it really doesn't matter that much. Just let them know what's going on, um, and they can see it. And girls can see it, my passion and my energy. Let them know, hey, I, I made 120 to 180 typically. 120 was my base. I worked in, um, I sold alternative uh, investment products for a uh, for a boutique alternative investment firm here in La Jolla, California. So the 120 was base, and I normally I normally landed between 150 and 180 a year. So I did pretty well here, but I had an expensive lifestyle. I had a three thousand dollar a month rent payment. I had a Porsche. I had I had a truck that I paid two hundred dollars a month rent uh, parking for that I never even drove because you don't really need it here. And then I realized that my office was four miles away. I'd rather ride my bike to work and started selling stuff. Got rid of the condo. Got rid of all of that. Thank God I did because I lost my job for COVID like two days before Christmas. And otherwise, it, it, otherwise I would have been like, oh, my God, what's going on? But got my severance, took it, went to Central America, built a sales team. I'm going to do exactly what I was doing before, but do it for myself. And I tell girls that and they know it. They can tell by looking at me that I don't have the loser mindset like, oh, my God, I don't have a job or COVID. Oh, what are we going to do? And to be honest, I'm happy because I'm free for the first time in my entire career and, I, and, and I'm pretty good at what I do. Um, and they can sense that. And my, my lay rate has gone absolutely through the roof, uh, make, despite making very little money at the moment. And of course, that will change. And mm. just let them know. Let them know what's going on. That's a good point. Josh, uh, go ahead. You're about to say something, too. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, to kind of build on uh, Jaron's point, right? The, the truth shall set you free. So the, you know, the most important thing to remember is one, you just got to be kind of honest up front about things. Um, and money isn't the end all be all because, um, especially for a lot of you younger guys out there, when you start 
leveling it up and you start making some money or you know making a little bit less money you're going to find that you're going to run into certain challenges at different economic tiers because i know when i was you know broke college kid the amount of challenges that i faced uh, in the dating world are radically different than the challenges that i'm facing now where i'm fairly well established um in a much higher income bracket and so mm -hmm. there's definitely going to be some very very um, nuances in those challenges that you're going to face with um, the in the dating world. But the thing that keeps that whole thing in check is your frame and, and how you handle it. And that's where a lot of guys, I think, lose a lot of focus is they think, OK, if I just focus on making like uh, a ton of money, that'll then put me in this level where automatically I'm ready to go. And it's like, well, no, now you have to deal with a depending on the type of girl you're going after especially girls that are used to dealing with guys with a lot of money. A lot of guys with a lot of money have absolutely zero, no game, no frame, no control. And so these girls just run right all over them. So it's important to learn your lessons as you're leveling up economically, uh, because you're getting, you are going to be facing um, different challenges, right? When you're a younger kid kind of coming up, you can get away with certain things and certain things can kind of, you'll be given a much broader amount of forgiveness and and ability to kind of get away with certain things that um, especially when you're in your 30s and 40s and you're dealing with girls that are used to guys at a certain economic level they just won't uh, plain and simply put up with it so yeah, if you've got if you've got a yeah, plan that's, that's, at like 25 you're far better off than a guy with nothing to show for himself at like 45 right i mean if you're 45 and you got a plan but nothing to show for yourself for your 45 years of life women aren't going to have that much patience for you uh, I, I will tell you this. I want to reiterate a comment that that Renegade said. You know, I hang out with a lot of these guys, and most wealthy guys are painfully boring. Yeah. And they are. I'll give you a great example. You guys have mentioned game. I was out Thursday night with some folks. A uh, couple of, couple of guys in our group, Lambos, Ferraris, all that nonsense. And so we're leaving to the next club. I was Uber in the whole the whole time I was down there. So I just ordered an Uber, a couple of us jumped in an Uber. And uh, this guy was begging this gal to get in his Lambo. And she finally just relented because she was like, just, she just gave up at this point. She's like, I'll just go. And what she realized with all that fancy stuff, and actually I was talking to a buddy of mine about this, is, oh, it was the craziest thing. It was the weakest, like, I'm sitting there watching this. <clears throat> and this guy, very good looking dude. Very good looking dude very successful, rich and zero game. It was pathetic to watch. And uh, I remember talking to a buddy of mine about this at the lake house this weekend. And uh, he said, you know what the Lambo does? And I said, what's that? He goes, they stick around a little bit longer, but if you're just not interesting, they just think you're just like any other loser out there. So one of the things I've noticed in the last couple of months, I've dated these different gals and going on double dates and all that, most guys are not interesting at all. Like they may be really successful in one area of their life, but they got nothing else going on for them. So then they're wondering like, well, why am I single? And I'm like, well, dude, all you do is work. Like you're just yeah. not an interesting guy. So really you can't, build on, you can't bore a woman. There's, there's yeah, one yeah, thing yeah. you can't do to women is you cannot bore them. And to really build on Jason's point it, there. Get really um, good at telling stories. It, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Remember, remember, money doesn't remember money doesn't guarantee success. Uh, you know, my woman and I were just hanging out with a mutual friend of ours, and she needed a weekend away from the guy she's married to. And I mean, this guy's a surgeon; he's crushing cash, crushing cash. And she's planning her exit strategy um, now. Obviously, there's a bunch of other normal red pill rules that come in and apply, and I'm not saying that they don't. But the complaints we got from her over and over and over again, as she was lamenting about it, was. He doesn't have a shit together anymore. Yeah, he's making money, but he's a slob. He's lazy around the house. He's not working out. You know, it, it all came back to mental point of origin, self security, self image, self drive. You know, being a man that that when she comes home feels like he's leading and guiding the space, feels like he's in control. You know, so remember, like I, I agree with everybody who's saying money is a big deal. Um, I'm not saying that it's not. And to Moff's point a while back, you know, if you're if you're with a woman who's making more than you you are going to be, uh, that's a higher risk scenario, but, but having money does not guarantee success long. And the biggest thing that a lot of guys don't realize, especially when it comes to a lot of the women that they're dealing with is that they tend to view it through our lens, right? Where it's like, okay, we have the burden of performance that we have to become. So right in order for us, unless our parents were super rich, in order for us to have access to, you know, the Lamborghinis and the Ferraris and all these high end VIP clubs and everything, we have to build towards that. 
where these girls, since the moment they turned 18 or 21, they've had access to literally all of this for years now. So, you know, if you're going out with a girl who's 30, well, guess what? For over a decade, she's had access to the highest of uh, the highest of lifestyle that you, you can offer. So that's where a lot of guys, um, you know, for, so for her, for a guy, right. You're kind of like, all right, you got to stand out, right. Cause there's a lot of dudes out there with a lot of money and a lot of cash, but again, you can't be boring. And why can't you be boring? Because she's been dealing with dudes like this for a very, very long time. And so she knows the ones that are boring. And then there's guys that um, are actually some type of interesting edge and that can actually stand out. So money exactly isn't everything. It definitely does help. But you also have to understand that there's the access side of the equation. And for us, like we just got access to this candy store for the first time. So we're like, oh, my gosh, like I'm going to go around. I'm going to try every different candy. I'm going to try the Laffy Taffy, the Skittles. I'm going to try this over here. Meanwhile, they've been in the store for, you know, 5, 10, 15 years. So for them, it's just like, oh, OK, so you, got, you always have to factor in that side of the equation. And even if their S&P is not that high, they still they still have that inflated ego because I, I remind girls all the time and they'll say they'll, they'll assume that I get like 300 matches an hour on Tinder. And I, I'll, I'll show them like, no, you know, I, I get a lot for a guy uh, compared to a lot of guy friends I have. But I'll put my phone next to him and, and they're just they're taking it back. They're like, no way. Um, and you'll notice that and a lot of girls will show you their dating profiles. If you just talk about the app and your experience on it, um, going back to the phone checking thing. Uh, usually from the get go, I used to check phones, and now with my girls, I we just I just get in the habit of pulling my phone out and showing it to them. But I also made a, a I changed a thing in um, my frame where uh, after my main girl uh, in my six month stint in El Salvador, after that, I decided my second girl, she kind of de facto became my main girl, and this girl is awesome. She was like nineteen, bisexual, super cute, it super into me, and somehow got the word out in her little bisexual network that I'm the guy that'll teach girls how to hook up with girls and i had the best summer of my life this girl was probably the best relationship i've had the well the first girl i was 100 percent honest with because all of a sudden with with the expectation that mm. i get to have other women as long as we share the phones came out so she'd go on my tinder and manage my girls for me she did a lot of my sourcing of women so if again from the get-go if that's the expectation or if that's kind of a boundary in the relationship or if that's the way you decide to structure your relationship then a lot of these things that guys worry about like oh does she make more money than me or oh should i check her phone if you have to check your phone you, you you're probably not going to find anything you're not going to find anything you're going to like um and even if it checks out clear you're going to look into stuff so i try to stay away from that stuff but bring it back home again guys just Keep it all together. Keep the message consistent and let girls just take the lead. Take the lead the entire time. Uh, even for women that make more money than you, you'll notice a lot of times that they're flustered, they're frazzled, they're stressed out. They'll come home. They want to, they've essentially assumed the man role in the relationship. So just, which they hate. So just be what mm -hmm. she needs you to be, which is, which is her rock. Yeah. When, when she comes home, just have a good time. Like, hey, have, you know, let's, ready to roll, uh, chase around the kitchen, fucking tickle them, do whatever it is that you need to do in your relationship to keep it together. But I always tell guys, your woman is a reflection of you. So if your woman's acting up, then uh, you, you need to you need to look right back at yourself and do something about that. Yeah, and the fundamental thing to remember, right, is that you're not going to get the best out of women if you don't generally like have an enthusiastic love for women, right? Like, yeah, there's definitely a lot of aspects of like hypergamy and things that can be yep. frustrating. But at the core, if you if you hate women, one, you're missing the whole point of all this. And two, you're going to start to see that really re reflected women are in fun. your relationships. Women are really yeah. fun. So, I mean, women are really fun when you're when you're leading the relationship, when she's complimenting her, like she's in your yeah. frame. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's that's why I can, I cannot get the whole, you know, black pill thing, like, you know, against yeah. women. And my, I just want to say to them, like, have you ever seen a pair of 34 double Ds? Like, how could you not like women? I, I, I mean, I, I'm just, no. But once once you realize and you have the user's manual, they're some unbelievable fun. They're right. really good. It's it, it's like, you know, once you put the right gas in your Ferrari. The user's or, manual. That's that's maybe what I yeah, should have called it. the user's manual. Right? That's yeah. what I call it. That's, that's not a book. That's a user's manual. Yeah. And, and you can have some unbelievable fun. And, you, you know, going back to Jason's point earlier, boring 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 they hate boring i still get from my girl i still get from her like what do you do i want to know what you do why do you go to washington dc all the time i'm like i yeah. gotta take care of business and and again 
90% of our competition, you know what they've done this, this last weekend, guys? They drank a whole ton of Miller Lite, a whole ton of Coors Light. They watched as much sports as they could, and they ingested a bunch of garbage food that was produced in a factory. Mm -hmm. All right, let's uh, catch up on some of these supers. Ed says, same situation as Steve. Once you have achieved success or crushing your purpose, what method uh, can decide if long-term relationship marriage is worth it after? I th you know, answer the question of, of like, going from spinning plates to beyond that. Um, marriage, like marriage doesn't make sense, period. I mean, you don't need to be married to have kids, okay? I mean, you might have some cultural issues, some religious issues around it. I have a video coming out in the next couple of weeks on where you can live um, in the United States where shared custody is by default, so that'll lower the risk. So, I mean, there's certain things that you need to consider. So marriage isn't like I'm not a advocate of it flat out. I mean, I have an entire chapter in my book on why men, why smart men don't get married now. So you guys can read the book if you haven't. Um, LTR, a few of the guys here can talk about that. So, I mean, like one of the things personally, you know, from the perspective of if you're going to get into an LTR is the big question that I'd be asking um, you know, if I was betting a new chick is, does she complement my life? Or does she complicate it, right? Like you want a woman that's going to make your life easy and your Johnson hard, not the other way around, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Does anybody else want to yeah, chime in on the, that? The I think the complicate versus compliment is the number one thing. Um, you know, discussion maybe for another time. I am married. I am generally anti-marriage uh, for all the reasons that we that we all talk about. Um, yep for me kind of the determination on, on answering that question of you know is if it's ltr or marriage is worth it uh i think when spinning for me when spinning plates becomes more of a pain in the ass than fun and you've got you've, you've narrowed your plate selection down to you know what you assess to be a collection of all high quality ladies and you've got one that consistently comes to the top it's not giving you drama you're having the best time with you're having the best conversation with she's you know to use rich's phrase she's digging your vibe you're digging hers she's about what you're you're advertising and then following through on what you're saying your purpose is like if she's about all that stuff that's when you start to maybe consider if you want to go ltr that way um and for me again and generally anti-marriage, I do have some religious considerations that came into play, especially as it relates to my kids. I personally think the studies are clear on what that environment is. Um, different people are different and opinions will vary. So, you know, vet that decision making process for yourself. Uh, but for me, that was the criteria. Cool. Does anybody else want to chime in on that one? Well, yeah, I mean, I would say that, you know, the it's not to get all woo-woo on everything, but, you know, the vibe and the energy, how they match that, that's definitely something that you want to consider. Um, so for me personally, um, I have a main girl that I've been seeing for over a year now. Um, phenomenal. Bye. Great. She chases other girls together. It's, it's, it's great. But the biggest thing that I noticed, especially when I started bringing her around uh, my friend group and everything, is that, um, you know, some of my closest friends have, have met her and they said, hey, you know, she's a very good match and compliment to like the energy that you put out. And really it's about that kind of energy exchange that you guys have. And yeah, you know, there's um, a whole lot of, you know, other fun and stuff that happens in the, in the meantime, but um, at the core of it, right. When you have that kind of dynamic and you've got someone that you really have a very good and dynamic energy exchange with, and it, it doesn't even matter with, you know, I'm like stressed out or whatnot. She just comes and sits down and just hangs out. It's just her presence alone just kind of helps give me a little bit of a, a balance to what it is that I have going on. And I kind of do the same thing for her. So when you have a really good dynamic like with uh, like that with somebody and you find that you're getting a click like that, then, um, you know, you can foster that more into the LTR-ish space. And depending on your situation or scenario, you can entertain that uh, in, in multiple facets. Uh, so, cause at the end of 2020, I actually had uh, two LTRs that were simultaneous um, and both knew about each other, but their personalities weren't compatible. So I kept those very separate, but uh, being able to foster two um, long-term uh, girlfriends while, you know, having zero drama and all my married friends were telling me about everything that they have going on. And it was just like, all right guys, this is, I, I don't know if I'm hacking the system here or anything, but just, 
you understand the, the flow and the energy in the way that uh, someone really vibes with your personality. Yeah, following the rule book. Uh, Dario says, where do you draw the, li- the fine line between a charismatic guy approaching a girl and being a low value male pursuing a woman? So if you're a low value dude, the last thing you need to be worried about is chicks. Yeah, that's 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 the that's not that statement is not for the advanced dating show. Yeah, <laughs> you, you num, number one in in not advanced dating is work on yourself and get your shit together because you should be able to in the advanced dating level walk up to any woman just in casual conversation as you see them during the day. I don't even yeah, waste yeah. my time with like Tinder and blah 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 and all that. I mean, it's like women are everywhere. Yeah, I, I'll tell you, you know, I don't do much of the online dating stuff. I did some back in December, and I met some. I'll tell you, all these guys bitching about low quality women. I don't know where they're, what they're doing, but all the gals I ended up dating between 27 and 40 were all entrepreneurs, really successful, beautiful, the whole, the whole shoot match. So, and and I don't, I don't look like anything special on a dating app. I'll tell you that, especially since I was 40 pounds heavier back then. But. Um, I will tell you, if you put in the work, there are some amazing women out there. I'm, I'm telling you right now, like I'm, I'm one of these guys that I, I'm typically only dating other entrepreneurs and kind of professionals and that sort of thing. And and they're out there. But I will tell you this, Rich is spot on. They don't date down. They really don't. Um, it's it's kind of rare when they do, especially the younger they are. But uh, they will they will bang down if you're chat enough and it's the right t- time of the month but they won't date right. on a long-term basis that's as right a ch- as a chat i can i can attest to that <laughs> as the <laughs> chat yeah. as the chat on the panel and, uh so yeah and, and i'm the same way it sounds like chat is I'm, um most of my dating is inside kind of my social circle and and in you know just running into into gals like hey what do you do okay hey i've heard you okay great let's you know do dinner or something. So that's been my kind of MO. I think I want to uh, clarify that real quick before we move on. Rich, yeah, go ahead, I, think, I think it's just, I think the guy's talking more about how do you differentiate between kind of going mode one and going after a chick and like being needy and pursuing. And I think no, that's I, gotcha. Okay. No, I took it at, as, as, as here, I'll, here, I'll scroll back up. Let me grab it again. I because I, I'm reading it wrong, but it sounds like, uh, how do you draw the line between being a guy going after what he wants and being a simp? Basically? Here it is. Uh, being charismatic, approaching a girl or being a low value male pursuing women. Well, you can't be charismatic and low value because yeah. even a broke charismatic guy has value, right? You see what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, I feel like he's, he's like acting, you know, like the yeah. charisma or he's memorizing lines for cold approach, which I'm not a big fan of. So yeah. if you're being perceived as a low value male chasing tail, uh, well, you know, that's what people yeah. are seeing, right? Well, it's probably the mental point of origin, right? It's like, hey, all right, what's the reason that you're approaching these girls, right? Are you just approaching them as a, out of the sense of, all right, cool, you know, I'm going to go out and just see if I can connect or, or whatnot, and, you know, I'm on my purpose and I'm fine? Or are you doing it as like, hey, I'm really charismatic and please love me, please like me, please go out with me, mm-hmm. right? So it really comes down to that uh, mental point of origin, I think. All right. We if got, you're charismatic, uh, people, will, people will fall into your uh, frame. All you need is an Irish accent. You're charismatic automatically. Hey, no. You're just born with charisma. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we got to start to try to wrap this up because we got about 13 minutes left, and I got to go private for my business here. Um, Erica, a generous super chat. Thank you, Erica. Any any tips to become a higher quality female in a long term relationship with a high value male? He's 52, very successful. I'm in my 20s. You say big breasts, number one quality of a high value female. Is a breast job a good idea or trashy, desperate to men? I want to match his SMV so that he has what he did here. Let's do a quick poll here in the live chat. Uh, Boob job. Yes or no? (laughs) Uh, Ask your community. Okay, there you go. The polls in the live chat. Um, My take on this I've never been unhappy about a boob job. They're not. Um, (laughs) I've been disappointed with the final result when you peel off the layers, but never been unhappy, you know, as sweater meat stands when you like see things as you <laughs> eat for the Like you have to pay the right amount of money. I mean, if yeah, you're going right. to get one of those cheap ones and yeah. like, you know, the nipples are kind of doing this or something like that, you're going to end up with like dudes looking at you kind of funny. Um, so spend the money and get it done right. Um, 
whatever that happens to be, that uh, I feel the line in the sand is is probably somewhere between ten and seven. The best ones, the ones where you can't nice tell. Yeah, like you really can't tell. Period. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, what do you guys think about her question? Well, I mean, I would just say by the fact that she's asking this type of question already right, demonstrates like a stream high level of value, right? Because you're asking, how can I be a better partner for, uh, you know, the, the guy that I'm going out with and seeing? So because a lot of girls, I'll be honest, like I've been a dating coach for six years. Very small percentage of girls ever ask this question. So by virtue of the fact that you're actually asking this question and looking into things like this, that already shows that, okay, you know, mm -hmm. you you have someone that you're more than comfortable, you know, hitching your wagon to a star. And now you're trying to figure out how you can be an even greater compliment to his life. And so um, that right there, I'd say puts you leagues ahead of the competition. Yeah. Well, I mean, plus she's in her 20s. So let's assume that she's 25 and he's 52. I mean, she's yeah. like half his age. I mean, being half his age alone is plenty. I mean, unless you're obese or not attractive whatsoever, but generally speaking, it should be plenty you know, for him to look at you as a um, beauty object, because that's what men look at women as. I mean, you're looking at him as a success object. So he's looking at you as a beauty object. If he, you know, if you've, if you're feeling like a breast augmentation is going to improve your SMV, get it if it makes you happy. If you don't, then don't, you know, it's up to you. Uh, you yeah, know, that's, that's a female shaming tactic, right? Like that's, that's yeah. what you're hearing from other women out there that are, that are shunning you and shaming you. Uh, but it's not, I, I wouldn't say it's the number one quality. I mean, look, like I, I responded to her in the, in the chat as well. And I said, look, keep yourself in as best shape as you possibly can and, and lean into your feminine energy. I mean, I, yeah. I think I've got three kind of big things on something like this. The first one is just stay in shape. Like just stay in shape. Mo Truth be told, although John MLD would probably disagree, most American women, if they just stay in shape, are all pretty hot. I mean, they're, there are some like chicks that got some facial stuff, but if they stay in really good shape, they usually look pretty good. Uh, I think the second one, I see this all the time because I finally started recognizing it. Um, uh, how alcohol affects women has something to do with the collagen on their face, and they've got less collagen than men do. Yeah. So if you've got a gal who's, let's say, in her 20s, she's moving into her 30s, mid 30s, and she drank a lot. It Smoking and boozing ages drugs, women you know? prematurely. Very, yeah, very quickly, I, yeah. I had no idea how much it actually eats at that, that sub-layer of the face. And you can yeah. now I can see it. I'm out at the club. They look like, like leather boy. and the sun, too. That'll do it. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's terrible. Um, and then I think the third thing is, that somebody had said it, just, just be feminine and easy to be with. Like I, I think we've said this a million times. Like Guys are actually really easy to be with. Aside from the guys who've got real psychological problems, like we're not hard guys to date. Like, just be present, available, and feminine. It, it, it it's pretty easy. I mean, it's low drama. Stay in shape. Yeah, stay, stay in shape. shape. Stay in shape. But, Make an effort to look good. Don't complicate it. it. Don't complicate it. And the fact she's asking the question is a good thing too. That means you're that means you're looking to look after your guys. So you're, you're down the right path. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. yeah absolutely. There's a comment here from somebody that says that if you're not standing upright in your skin, you won't stand up any better with the add-ons. I mean, if you got a personality disorder, no guy is going to want to put up with a chick with a perfect set of double D's with a personality disorder over a long-term basis. I mean, they might for a little bit, but not for very long. Yeah, and on the flip side, she's going to. She's probably already really good looking, and I bet you that if she's cool and nice, she's going to stand out from her competition very easily. Yeah. Um, so we got 147 votes on the poll, and for the results, it says no, 63%. I don't know, man. I'm I'm totally fine with a great set of tailor made titties. I am too. But like you said, the real, I think the real expensive ones, the ones they do under the muscle, that's the one you got. <clears throat> Don't want the cheap ones because it's ridiculous. Yeah, if you could, if you could work them like a speed bag, then they're not, <laughs> they're not the right fit. <laughs> uh, this is a whole topic for another show, Rich. But uh, yeah, I wonder, disagree with you on this, episode, Rich. If, if you well, need, if you if you need a boob job, it's going to be like the guy with the Lamborghini. It's not going to yeah. get you what you want if you suck in other fields. And you that's need true. Job. There you go. It's like it's like giving a Lamborghini to a nerd. You know, it's just you, you know, like a plugged in beta. It's just not going to work out for you. It's not, not going to yeah. change your game that much. <laughs> looks nice, you know. It looks nice parked there, you know. But anyway, um, we got like another seven minutes left, and. Uh,
I don't know. I'm feeling like maybe we should do more of these, man. It seems like it's kind of a cool conversation to have you guys in here to do this. Uh, another quick super there from Tony. Fun, Thank you, yeah. sir. Um, what about other advanced game techniques that we, that we can drop? Because I mean, we got like 10 minutes left, but just real quick. I mean, like, what have you guys come across or learned that like really like knocked your socks off? Like, holy shit, that actually works. Don't I have gotta, a... Oh, Go I was going to say, yeah, don't, don't have a mindset of scarcity. You know, I think that's one real lesson that I took from Rolo and Rich from your user manual is if you have a mindset of scarcity mm -hmm. and you're thinking one itis and moth, you know, in the in the forums, you know, a while ago, you kind of helped me realize this a while ago. So if you if you've got a mindset of abundance, that's really going to be very helpful from my point of view. I would say that uh, anytime that this one word, if you add this one word to the end of your thoughts, this will carry you very far. And that one word is and. So a lot of times, right, when you're out there and you're just doing whatever it is you do, and it's like, oh, like you're, you know, you seem to date a lot of women and. Oh, you seem to be have a healthy opinion of yourself and just ask that as add that to the back of your thoughts and sometimes your phrases that will push your charisma levels to beyond level 10. I can't, I can't emphasize that enough because I've seen that uh, happen for myself. And I got that tip be like a cocky, moment. funny response too. For advanced Perfect. level guys. Yeah, for advanced level guys, those are subtle shit tests. You can you can steamroll right over those. Um, I've learned to be more open and more blunt. Um, from the get-go, girls know that they're, you're not the only one. Um, but I refer to my girls um, as I say, hey, my other girls. But I talk about them affectionately because I genuinely like them. I genuinely enjoy being around them. They've been vetted. The, the cream has risen to the top. And... They're girls I enjoy at having in my life that add a lot of value to my life. And I let girls know that new girls that, hey, uh, you know, if you play your cards right, you can be one of them. You can meet them and and they, they all get along. Um, this is more advanced level <laughs> game stuff. And I'm just getting into it after following like the modern life dating and Paul Benjamin stuff. But you guys, you can you can really write your own relationship style. Uh, you, you can plan your sex life. You, you act like you're God. You can do whatever you want because. As men, we own the game, uh, especially guys that watch this channel, because there's no competition out there. Once you realize that, oh, uh, someone else said earlier, all, or uh, the Irishman, uh, all weekend long, you're drinking Bud Light and putting crap in your system. You, you guys are actively working to improve yourselves. You already own the game. Go out there and, and realize that. Work on yourself and, and also remind yourself that, when, for example, when I talk to a woman, I assume that her day will be better because I talk to her. Now, that doesn't mean online. Uh, online, you know, they have the entitlement thing. But when I day game, gen women like talking to me. They, it makes their day to talk to me. And I have no problem getting a number. I don't even have to ask. They just offer it up. So have a little higher self-worth. Have a little more value. Have something to offer. And you have no competition. Get out there and have fun with it. Uh, these, gir these girls are dying to be asked out by guys like us. I would say 90% of the girls you approach are going to be positive. You may not close. I mean, I was I was out with, with Rob from our community here in Washington, D.C., and there was, to use my favorite phrase, there was two stump grinders sitting next to the fountain in D.C., and I said, watch this. And I went over. I sat in between the two of them, stuck my feet, and I said, hey, ladies, what's happening? And they were delighted, man. We were talking to them for half an hour. I mean, there were twos at best. But Rob was like, what are you doing? I said, I'm approaching women. I just like talking to people. Just get used to it. Just get used to interacting with strangers. <laughs> Stump buster. I would say to echo Josh's point, like, don't be afraid to keep it the mystery. Man. I mean, I remember I was on a date and, and after, I mean, you don't have to answer any question with a straight answer. I mean, what do you do for work? I'm an astronaut. I'm, ta I'm taking off to Mars in the morning. Like, it, it, <laughs> it doesn't matter, right? Because she's not, she doesn't care about it. Yeah, I'm treating it like a job interview. And not only that, I think a big thing that a lot of guys miss out on is get good at reading body language and reading signals because women will communicate with you with their body when they want you to make a move, when they want you to kiss them, when they want you to grab them, when they want you to, to be that man and sort of mm -hmm. take them. So um, get really good at that and also get good at looking at the signs where she's not interested because you're going to potentially, you know, if you're out in the world and in the game, you can potentially get in a lot of trouble if you're not being smart. Uh, so really, really important to learn those subtle signs of body language and interest versus disinterest. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Have fun. That's the biggest thing. Have fun. Because yeah. most guys treat it like a chore or like a strategy about plan. And it's like you're overstressing yourself. Like just if you come from a genuine place where you're just genuinely having fun and genuinely enjoying people's company, you'll go way further.
And what matters more is your energy, not necessarily what you say, how you approach it. So even if a girl's taken and you have mm -hmm. good energy, she'll, I've had girls tell me like, oh God, you know, I'm married and I'm here with my husband and you know, the husband's a total stud or something. She's like, but you know, any other time I, I, I you know, I, I would have had a good night with you. I'm like, hey, I appreciate the honesty, you know, have a good night, treat it like adults, uh, the, no hard feelings and then just move on to the next. Um, chances are you're gonna bump into her again in the night. And a good thing to have on your side is female allies. Like, oh, that guy got turned down. He wasn't a dick. He's having a good time, and she'll bring her friends over to you, too. Um, if you have – there's nothing – like, you can go to the club with your boys, but there's a couple times in El Salvador where I took a, a handful of girls with me, bought two bottles, which is like 100 bucks at the nicest club up there, and told, gave them each two glasses, said, only girls are allowed at the table. Guys must come directly to me and let them know uh, there are girls that we had, like, a three-way thing going with. We're recruiting. Let them know right up front. And I watch my girls go to work and just pull girls to the table, and – I lived in Godma the entire night. Sure enough, uh, the guys suddenly noticed. They started coming over, inviting me to after parties, all the cool stuff. And that's how you do it. That I went out that night looking to have fun. I was already with my main girl and one of her girlfriends, and we're like, I was like, hey, screw it, I'm, I'm bored. Let's buy a couple of bottles and see how see if we get a party going. And it was it was nuts. I, I felt like a rock star, and it was just it was a hundred bucks. Um, that's perfect. So get creative, have have fun. Do, do, these girls want to be entertained. Um, you know, yeah, take a break from your fun. life too. Let, girls are fun. They don't want to talk about work. They don't want to be stressed out. They're they're already stressed out, and you're stressed out. Perfect. All right, um, I'm going to start to wind it down on that note. I'm going to just pull all of you guys out and um, want to thank you all for joining. Um, in the in the chat, Moff was dropping uh, links to everybody, so you'll be able to find um, their socials or if you want to reach out to them, all there. Um, I missed one, Steve. Where are you? Let's do it this way. There we go. Um, yeah, so those are some of the boys from my community. If, if you guys are interested, I mean, we don't just talk about uh, like field reports and or Chase and Taylor or anything like that. I mean, that's a part of the conversation, but we talk about many, many other things. So uh, if you're interested, you can learn, do it with this hand, you can learn more about the community over here. Uh, that's always pinned in the top comment. And I got a shout out to the channel sponsor before I run, Tactical Soap, Grondike Soap Company. Um, beard oils, pheromone sticks, and pheromone infused soaps are all handmade. They do not disrupt your endocrine system. Go to coopersoap.com over here. Uh, you're showering anyways, and it helps support the creation of content on this channel. So we'll be back next uh, Monday for another uh, TUA episode, another Unplugged Alpha. If you guys don't have the literature, again, it's on Amazon. Um, as a few of the guys had alluded to, it's it's basically you know your handbook on... Uh, getting better results out of life in general. So go check it out. Uh, it's available in Kindle, Audible, and print. If you're in a country that doesn't uh, take shipments from Amazon, you can order it either from a site called bookdepository.com or I also uploaded uh, a PDF version to Gumroad and that's all pinned below in the uh, description once I let this thing render and stuff. So we'll see you guys in the next one. I wanna thank my boys again for joining and uh, we'll see you guys very, very soon. I got a bunch of pre-recorded stuff that's coming out this week. So peace out.